Hi everybody, it's username Kate and welcome back to the channel. Today I am on Paddock Motorcycles Yamaha NT09 SP. Now this is the 2023 model, it is not the new facelift one that comes out in a couple of months but it's still a current model so let's ride it, let's see what we think. It's my first time on an NT09 SP and even though the weather is a bit grim as you can see by this massive puddle <laughs> We'll still give it a go. So if you're interested to find out what I think about the MT-09 SP, keep watching. Get moving and grooving. Oh. Oh. Sorry, we had to start the video with a nice sound. Right, guys and girls, the ride part. So I'm finally on an MT09 SP, and I'm sorry to say the roads aren't great, but is it? A username kit ride review if it's not either chucking it down, greasy as heck on the roads, or even snowing. Like my first attempt to ride this bike, I was in the Peak District, I took a left. Wow, it became Narnia. There was ice blocks this thick at the side of the road, and that was one of the grimmest rides back. <laughs> and I'm on. S22 rubber on a bike that's not mine. Wow, not a great, not a great uh, attempt. <laughs> but we don't have dry roads today, but at least the rain is staying away for now. So, oh, that symphony. We can uh, give it a little go. Let's wave at this motorcyclist. <laughs> it's Mark. Mark on the Kawasaki from Tilsley. He stopped while I was filming. So, yeah, first time riding an MT09 SP. Now these, you can spot them a mile away because only the MT comes in that lovely Icon Performance colour. Oh, daffodils in February. Oh God, that is a good sign. That is an excellent sign. That is a sign that fuels my happiness, that's for sure. Oh, this isn't a nice road, is it? Look at this. Horrid. So yes, as mentioned, only available the SP model in this colour option. Okay, so we're working with 117 brake horsepower. Woo! And 93 newton metres of torque. So I haven't got it in the sexiest mode today because look at the conditions. Like I'd be pretty mad to, wouldn't I? Just creep round here. Can I pass nicely? Yeah, I've got it in mode two and I've got the traction control on two as well. Arguably I could have it in a like softer throttle response mode even more so and more traction. But it's alright, it's alright like this, touch wood. We'll go this way. Haha, <laughs> pheasant! Oh gosh, don't show Bruce that clip. We'll have PTSD. Oh, look at this. Nice, you know, baby. Can't really go too wild on the run up to a bridge where you can't see if anybody's coming. Well, you can a little bit, it's all good. Oh, look at this road. 
we can hear that triple engine sink. So it's an 890cc cross plane triple. Oh, and it is a bit of a rocky ship. Now, this bike, this is the 2023 model. I'm very much aware that the 2024 model will be coming out in a couple of months time. In fact, I know Yamaha are already planning a launch. I'm not going to be on that launch, but I can guarantee if you want all the sexy updates, keep an eye on Chopsy's channel. But thankfully, due to my connection, my newfound connection with Paddock Motorcycles, I'll be getting on it ASAP. And also, if you're interested, I'll be giving you guys a comparison on the 2023 versus the 2023. 24. Now I can cover a few little bits and bats on this ride but obviously it's a bit different when you're getting side by side and you can really see how they stack up against each other. So this bike is going to cost you, if you get one brand new, £11,310. Now the new facelift model that is coming out in a few months is £11,800 so it's a little bit more oh gravel on a bend just what we love is a little bit more and there are quite a few differences but one of the main differences that I think people are most interested about and it's not the face but it's the fact that Yamaha have finally put Brembo's on the front calipers of the new one so I mean I've been riding this bike today and personally I don't have any issues with the brakes that are on but maybe I suppose if you're gonna do a few track days on it you know maybe a higher spec front brake caliper is gonna speed the ticket oh look at this road beautiful I feel like I've got to put it in that sport mode for you just so you can hear. Let's do it here. So let's put it in neutral. There we go. Right, so the mode is flasher. So we're currently in two. Traction control mode two. If we press the mode button, it swaps these around. So you've got the mode, you've got the traction mode. But this is where you use this toddle. toddle. This uh, button up here. So you can change the modes. So one is quite a Larry mode, but the maximum traction control we can put uh, in this is two without doing the M, which is manual and really going into it and fine tuning it. So I'll put it in mode one, just because I think you'll be able to hear the difference, the crisp, the snap, crackle, pop of the throttle, honestly. So yeah, let's go. Bit gritty, a bit gritty and gravelly. Let's wave at this guy. So listen. Okay, the front wanted to was like angling to come up. Oh, so I'm just putting it on briefly because these roads are sketch and we've got sheep and all sorts. But I'm just going to tickle the throttle and be a bit delicate. But I just wanted you to. You can hear the difference. It is audible. But I mean, I would like as much traction as I can get my hands on today because we've got stuff like that, mud, awful. Got a cattle grid. There we go. Listen. Oh! Yeah, she sounds spicy in this mode. A definite difference. Oh, <laughs> yeah, boy. Stop. Just stop. And honestly, we've got that beautiful cross-plane triple symphony teamed with these rolling hills. Oh, I feel blessed. I feel glad to be alive. Oh, this is just, this is, this is a visual delight, I tell you. Anyway, back to the bike. Oh, okay, yeah. This mod is just vicious, ferocious. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why this 
MTR9 has a reputation as a hooligan bike. It's got it. Oh. <sighs> okay, so back to the bike, back to the bike. Right, what have we got? Okay, so on the SP, we've got an Olin's rear shock, which we don't have on the standard MT-09. Ah! <laughs> nice! On the front, we've got KYB, fully adjustable suspension. And there are so many knobs and dials and twizzly bits for the front suspension setup on this bike. Now that's going to lead me into height of the thing. So I'm going to insert a little clip now of what it's like for me to sit on the bike. So enjoy guys. For those of you who are interested in the height of this bike, I'm going to show you. So I am a five foot four individual with a 29 inch inside leg measurement. I class myself as a bit of a shorty and not in an R&B kind of way. And this bike has a seat height of 825 mil. So this is what it's like for me to sit on it. So the peg kind of falls directly where you want to put your foot down. But at 825 mil, this bike has a really skinny and narrow seat. So it's absolutely not a problem just to have a flat foot, as you can see. Let's cut back to the main ride review. Okay, dokie, right, having seen that, it does look pretty low and pretty accessible, doesn't it? Now, as I mentioned, the XSR 900 is 810 mil. But I guess on the SP, on this model, because you've got so much fine tuning available from that suspension, you could firm it up a little bit or you could soften it a little bit so you know it can help you with reach. But I suppose it all just depends on what you want out of a bike. Because if you want to take it on track, you ain't going to want to soften off that suspension. So it can help you touch the floor because you're going to want it as firm and as stable as possible. Oh, this bike in that mode. Filthy. Filthy! Oh. But yeah, this bike has an electronic suite inspired by the R1M. It's got so much technology on this bike as standard. Let's not run this uh, walking hazard over. There we go. So yeah, Yamaha have thrown everything at this bike. We've got a six axis IMU. We've got a quick shifter and auto blipper as standard and it's delicious. It's silky smooth. It works blissfully as it should. We've got lean sensitive ABS, lean sensitive traction control. We've got lift control, slide control, wheelie control. Honestly, it's got so much stuff. This bike has a 14 litre tank. The fuel gauge is a bit of a strange one because you've got one solid bar at the front and then it goes into like three smaller ones and I was on one bar and I don't know how long I'd been on one bar for but I still managed to get 9.5 litres in the tank at the petrol station. Ergonomically this thing is mega comfy, you've got your just stereotypical naked bike riding position, fairly upright electronics included in the price of this we've got cruise control which is pretty good the handling of this thing i mean don't get me wrong we've not been absolutely smashing it into bends today because you don't know whether you're going to blink and there's going to be gravel everywhere but oh it does handle so lovely it tips in nice it feels feels um fairly planted I don't get as flighty a feeling on this as I do with say like the KTM 890R. The weight of this bike, 190 kilograms, it's not bad, it's not bad. Now one of the things aesthetically that I absolutely adore about this bike, I love the Icon Performance colour. I just think it looks so beautiful and is very striking and you know it's an SP. It's almost, I guess, like the recognisableness of the Triumph Street 7765 RS in that yellow. You know it's an RS, you know it's the fancy one. With this, you know it's the fancy one. 
Oh, I'm such a tart. Maybe not tart, but I am a magpie for sure. I want the blingy, shiny, eye catching stuff. Taking power is <laughs> there. So there are good points and there are bad points on any bike that you ride. And I feel like as a reviewer of bikes, it's important to be a hundred percent transparent with you know what I think about a bike. And that actually brings me on to the point how you know there's a lot of people that say you're taking a bike out from a dealership, you're gonna be biased. And you know what? I respect the scepticism, I think that's the word, but the beautiful thing about the dealerships that I work with is that they know that I'm going to call out the bad points because no bike is perfect and you're just living in Delulu land if you think that they all are. I guess the good thing about working with dealerships is they're working with me ultimately because you know I have a big reach of an audience but my audience is massively important to me and I don't want to do anything to annoy you guys and I will remain true to myself and what I think about bikes now if that's not enough to you know hopefully try and ease your worries <laughs> about dealership bike reviews and you still want to get on the keyboard and smash angry words out then you know feel free it's your prerogative sure sure but you know my perspective so on to the bad points are the points that you know I'm not so thrilled about on this bike on a lot of the bikes that I've ridden and jumped on the switch gear is pretty intuitive like everything's quite obvious and you can work your way around the modes quite quite easily not with this one if you're just jumping straight on it i couldn't figure out how to change the mode on the fly it was in the the dullest one it was in the rain mode it's got a proper damp and throttle response it does not sound anywhere near as sexy it doesn't accelerate like it does in sport mode and i just went on my motorway trip with that feeling because i couldn't change it on the fly i just had no idea how to do it i didn't understand and that's because nothing is that easy so this spinning wheel isn't easy to operate especially not in gloves this up and down arrow doesn't really do much in terms of modes unless you click what is generally the flasher you know like to flash people that's the mode button so it's, it's just not easy when you jump on it on the offset you know to figure out what's going on obviously to counter that if you're an owner of this bike you'll get to know the ins and outs a lot better than somebody that's just jumped on it for a 30 minute demo for example but it can be frustrating and it was for me like ah, how do i get it into larry mode like i just couldn't figure it out and it was quite irritating like i say it's just not that obvious from the offset but i spent a bit of time with it and now i understand it a lot better and how it works and i've used the cruise control function on the motorway that works great the screen also we've got a 3.5 inch color tft and it is a little bit on the small side now evidently yamaha have taken note of that because the 2024 model has a five inch color tft I mean it does have everything on there that you need to see and I suppose if you're a minimalist you could argue that you don't want to be staring at an iPad tablet or something the size of. It's quite nice in black with the colours, you know, it just all it just looks stealthy and I do like that. But yeah, it could be a bit bigger just to make life a little bit easier. <laughs> and this is another thing. Look how wobbly it is! like it shakes like mad so that's a bit distracting another thing that took a little bit of time to get used to for me was when i put my right foot down and arguably all oh, your advanced riders will be tutting you shouldn't be putting your right foot down you need it for the brake for optimal control i know i know all right i'm a hypocrite well sometimes it's just comfier to put the right leg down okay so i will i do what is comfy and safest for me at the time but there is a bit of a plastic casing on the engine there and it's never hot and that's probably why it's actually got that plastic cover on there it just look it rubs it rubs 
So yeah, that was just something to kind of get used to. Comfort, oh, the seat for me is, I find it really comfy. I've no complaints there at all. Ergonomically, the riding position, I really like it. I find it so neutral and just lithe and agile and, oh gosh, it just flicks, flip flops so easy. You can dance with this pretty nicely. So as you guys know, I put this bike in crisp, sporty throttle response mode so that we could, you know, hear it and I could demonstrate to you guys the urgency of that throttle when you do wind it on. But I must say that even riding through the towns, look, we're in fourth gear, doing 24 miles an hour. It's not juddering, it's not hating life, it's just dealing with it and it's dealing with it in a very, very smooth way. So I can imagine if you've got good self-control of that right hand, I reckon you could get some pretty decent MPG on this thing. Oh, another thing that I don't like that's not sexy about this bike. Now the headlight's divisive. I'll put a little slow-mo pan of a B-roll up. I actually don't mind it. I don't think it's like a looker looker, but I'm also not repulsed by it, okay? So I could personally live with it. Like, could you? Let me know in the comments. But one of the things I can't get away from that I think is a bit crappy on the MTR9, same with the XSR 900. I just can't respect that exhaust. Oh, it looks so... Well, it doesn't look like anything. It's hidden away, it's tucked away. Like I want to, I want to look at it, I want to admire it. Can't admire it if it's just hidden away. I had to get on my hands and knees the first time I rode the XSR 900, just looking for it, trying to find it. So yeah, I definitely have to put some kind of aftermarket exhaust on, 100% because the sound is phenomenal on the MTR 9 and the MTR 9 SP. But it's not down to the exhaust in my opinion, it's the induction sound, so... So yeah, if we could have a bit of sexy exhaust notage, that'd be a plus. I'm gonna take you back to my outro now, where I'm just gonna mention a bit of an exciting thing that I have going on with paddock motorcycles in April. And yeah, whilst the rain started, I'll wrap the road ride section of this vlog up. Take care, guys. Well guys and girls, that concludes my vlog on Paddock Motorcycles Yamaha MT-09 SP. Guys, let me know what you think about this bike in the comments below. And in fact, Paddock Motorcycles are hosting a demo day on the 6th of April. Uh, I will be there if you want to go for a ride, get yourself booked in. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate you guys. And until the next one. Take care and ride safe. Bye.